check me out. I'm wearing my soccer shirt today. My Brazilian soccer shirt because I'm going to be reviewing the Stetson amplifiers from Brazil. Now that is a selection of amplifiers that can make any man jealous. So what we have here are all the full line of Stetson amplifiers that we carry here in the United States. Now this company, like I mentioned, is from Brazil. They've been around since 1989, but this product is taking off like a rocket ship. People just can't get enough of this stuff. So we brought in the full line, one of the only dealers, at least in the southern region of the United States, that's an authorized dealer. So if you have concerns, questions with technical support, we got you covered for all those things. There's three different lines that you're going to see here in front of you. Now these two are the killers. Those are the export line. Those are the ones that sell the most in the one and the two-ohm version. And I'm going to explain to you about the impedance. It's a big part of purchasing this product. Also, you have the high line, serious stuff here, which sells equally as good. And then you have the iron line. The iron line is more of like their entry level. So that's kind of like their entry level. This stuff here is their full bandwidth stuff. So it's, it's two, three, four channel product. All these guys are all the mono block. This is the stuff that starts smoking your speakers like they're going out of style. Those guys are the ones that everybody really wants. Those are the killers. And these things have won IASCA competitions worldwide. This stuff is serious. And that's not even the biggest one, but it, it is the biggest one that I sell just because anything beyond that, it just gets a little silly. You know, I can special order if you want it, but you know, hey, if that's what you're into, man, whatever. So. I'm going to start with the most popular one. I'm going to bring out this EX10500 EQ. This is the one ohm version. I'm going to explain to you what this unit does, why it does it, and everything you need to know about making a good decision on if you're going to purchase this product for yourself. By the way, if you like real manly heft stuff with heft, this has got you covered. This amplifier, I mean, you could feel you've got something here in your hand when you pick one of these bad boys up. This thing is serious. This here is the export line. It's a digital amplifier. It's model EX10500 EQ. Okay. Now this one here is the one ohm, and here is the reason why you need to pay very close attention. If you listen to anything I say, make sure it's this one if you're going to consider purchasing this amplifier. This amplifier here is rated, and you'll see, at one ohms and two ohms. Now, if you bought the same exact amplifier, it will perform equally as well at one ohms or two ohms. So typically, with typical North American thinking, if you have an amplifier and you say it's a, a 10,000 watt RMS rated amplifier at 2 ohms, you would think that half the impedance would be half or 50% more power depending on the power supply and how it performs and the impedance and the, the, the settings and all this kind of stuff. That is totally the opposite of how these amplifiers perform. The way it works is that they wind up their power supplies in such a way where if it has a higher voltage, it uses less current. So that's why this amplifier can perform equally as a 2 ohm model as a 2 ohm can with a 1 ohm model so that's very very important so i'm not going to beat that horse to death oh, i said what i had to say here's, here's some of the other specifications um real quick if you can't find the stuff online that i find that's noteworthy of course the higher voltage you're going to get a little bit better boost on the output side and if you're going to invest in an amplifier like this make sure you have good grounding good ground strapping make sure you have good power cable you have plenty of surplus of power Plenty of alternator current to supply this monster with all the juice it's going to need to do its job. So important. Okay, so let's just get to the, the meat and potatoes of this amplifier, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to start here on the side and show you. There's your amplifier inputs. So you got a 2 gauge input on power here and you have your ground. You'll notice you have a fan in and you have it going in. You have two more on the other side so it flows back in. So you have an input and an output. So you have cross cooling in this amplifier built in. No need to purchase one. You already have that. On your front of your amplifier here you have your power, protection circuit, and clipping. The clipping is another bonus feature on this amplifier which is so important and so many people overlook it. This little button here, they call it their magic button. What this does is they're over clipping or this will eliminate the distortion because what happens when you get an amplifier of this stature, okay, and you have distort, I mean, subwoofers, honestly, are audible distortion. It's not, they have no musical value. However, if you do introduce static and distortion into the clipping signal and you amplify it and send it back out to the speakers, what happens is the speakers clip, they pop, and typically it'll put a lot of stress on the voice coils and eventually the, the speakers will meet their demise because they're not being treated with a clean signal being outputted to them. So this one here will eliminate a lot of that. Over here is your barrier strip. You have two positive, two negatives. Your input and your output, you have one RCA input and one output. So you have one in, and you can have a slave output to go to a separate amplifier 
if that's what you're doing you have multiple amounts of these amplifiers next on the side of the amplifier that I want to talk to you about is your level of course here you have HPF which stands for high pass filter which goes from 10 to 700 Hertz okay here your low pass filter which goes from 50 Hertz to 100 K Hertz so this actually can be a bandpass amplifier if you actually know how to tune these in opposition to one another or in relation to one another over here you have your bass your mid bass and your mid high and of course that clipping button I was telling you about which is terrific it's a great tool for anybody no matter how advanced and superhuman you think you are with your audio tuning anybody can benefit from this myself included I know I've made several fatal mistakes in audio systems not paying attention to that one little feature right there so that's basically it like I said you have over here your terminal strips so you can put two here two here I mean technically you could utilize this for a bank of mid bases or you could do some serious door panels or some full range or whatever um, Stetson has done some videos on YouTube if you search their stuff you'll see they have like this wall and literally they'll power it up with one of these insane amplifiers which can sound amazing however they do have other amplifiers I'm, I'm particularly a fan of having separate amplifiers for different stages for highs uh, mid bases, lower mid bases, um, you know, smaller woofers like eights and stuff like that, and then you have, you know, your higher demand woofers like tens, twelves, fifteens, eighteens, what have you. But that's just my personal opinion. If you want to have more opinion from me, you know, shoot me an email or a message, and I'll tell you what I think you might want to do for your specific system. But for these systems, I think an amplifier like this, if you're going to go through all the expense of getting one of these things, you should use it for its full capabilities okay and that's just for putting a heart on some subs and just beating the piss out of those things i guess because that's what this thing is made for so that's my opinion on that moving along let's get along to the next one this amplifier basically is half of what that 10500 gives you in size everything else um you have instead of uh, two gauge inputs you have four gauge over here instead of having the input and output for a slave output for another amplifier you just have two inputs dedicated for the power of this amplifier fan cooling remains the same input and output eq identical you have one set of machine terminal outputs for your speaker output as opposed to two sets on the 10500 still you have all the led indicator status everything else here stays the same but one noteworthy comment that i like to make about this 5000 model which applies to different models across the the whole export line series is that you'll see I don't know if you can see that but the 1 ohm say for instance gives you 5600 watts RMS 55 on the 2 ohm but going to um, the 2 ohms you got 3400 3550 on the other model with the 2 ohms so it kind of there is no one size fits all for every person you really need to educate yourself I would definitely suggest going to Stetson's website and downloading the manuals I've seen the button there you could download and take the two guides and put them side by side and make sure you get the right application that's right for your situation very important now we're going to take a look at this Highline this is a model HL 804 huge seller I mean here in the states this is, this is pretty much the amplifier that most people want to get for their highs okay so non-digital different beast completely from the export line and here's a good relevant piece of information that proves that unlike those guys you see that when you change the impedance you change the output like in a typical situ situation if you have half the impedance you have more power more less current you know high, it, it, there is no alterations in their windings and engineering inside the amplifier this is very typical of what you find in US engineering for amplifiers or st standards I should say for US uh, amplifier engineering so here for instance you got 4 by 260 at 4 ohms 4 by 165 at it's all changing around 2 by 520 4 by 225 4 by 140 2 by 450 um, you got a bridged output and you have a stereo output so you could use this for a two channel or a four channel amplifier depending on what you're trying to accomplish so this is very common to what you would find and expect in the United States made product okay size is very easy and anybody can fit this under a seat or in a back cargo area not a big deal you'll see that there's an omission of all the fan technology because again totally different amplifier on the inside you have your left outputs and you have a common bridge you could actually do um, 
two channels, stereo, or one with the sub, and you could have one mono bridge. So you could use a three channel configuration, two channel, four channel, um, you, you name what you want to do. Standard barrier strip you find with um, Phillips screws, you know, which you put fork terminals or whatever you're going to use in there. On your other side, again, very, very standard kind of stuff. Inputs, left, right, rear, left, right, flat, base boost, level gain for your front and rear sides, and you have a selector switch for the crossover. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. So there's your high line. I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting back onto this model here, but this is the EX3000 EQ, same series as the export line as the 5000 and 10500. And I just wanted to give you an idea. You can see that you have an export line and you can have the HL series. They look pretty good together, actually. Let me put it to you so you can see it. That would be helpful, right? There's that. There's that. So they make a nice looking pair for a nice little audio system. A little bit more in height, but if you build a little amp rack, you could kind of level them out, make them look cool. But here's that 3000. Full EQ that you expect in the export line. Inputs. One set of speaker output. Again, 4 gauge input side. This one still has a fan like all the stuff in the export line. This is a serious little amplifier. Don't let the size fool you. That thing is... That thing ain't messing around. Now... This one here, a little bit different of a story. I'm not going to really say much bad about it, but I will say this. Um, just using standard voltage law, I can tell you there's a 25 amp fuse in here. 25 times 12. Well, let's just round it off. That's 250, 125, 75. But this one is not going to live up to the full output ratings such you would find on the export series or the digital series or the Highline series. This one here, but again... Look at the size of this amplifier. For what this thing does for the power and the price range that this little amplifier offers, I mean the consumer, so worth it. And a lot less uh, worse than anything else you're going to find out in the market, especially for this price range. Because some of these amplifiers really get a little pricey. This here is really small. You can throw this in a boat, in a motorcycle easily, in a saddlebag, hide it in behind a dash. And, a, and a, so many applications you could use for this little amplifier. And this thing has a lot to offer. Input for your left for your left channel, right channel, separate gains, and again, your flat, high pass, low pass filter that you would expect in any US made product. There's nothing, there's no learning curve going on here. Very straightforward, nice machine, um, low profile connections, single 25 amp fuse. I mean, that's, that's a winner, I think, really. That's for a three channel system, two channel, um, and again, it's digital. You could use it as a four channel, you could use it as uh, two full range, you could have a sub or, or a lower mid bass scenario. You could have it for two pairs of mid basses, uh, four mid basses, four just tweeters. You name it, this little amplifier will do it for you. Just to give you an idea, it says it's got four by 100 watts RMS, which I know is not possible because mathematically it's just it defies voltage law uh, and Ohm's law, but it's 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 pretty close. And I, I'm telling you, a lot of stuff out here these days you got to be really careful. But this one here, again. What that amplifier says, that's more true to the fact. But again, you get what you pay for. Keep that in mind as well. But this amplifier here is something that everybody can afford. And this is also going to be a very good seller. And it is a good seller. Very small. It's very affordable. Um, it's very flexible. And it really offers a lot for the money. I think it's a great product. This whole line has been nothing but a joy to work with so far. The returns are almost non-existent. People that buy one come back and buy another. These are probably some of the most loyalist customers I've actually had in, in a long time. I don't know what's up with that, but keep it coming, guys. So if you're looking for a good place to buy it, obviously buy it for me because, you know, I like money just like the next guy, right? And plus, I'm very, I mean, you know me. I care about people. It's just, it's just that's why I do what I do here, right? So there's all your Stetson stuff uh, for 2018. This stuff is really terrific. And, um... I definitely wanted to prom promote this product because I know there was like nobody on YouTube. There's just one guy in Russia who's making this stuff. And I'm like, hey, well, how about the Americans? How about, you know, hello, you know, we're, we're, we're here, right? So there it all is. And if you have any other questions, just go to our website at lescoelectronics.com. We have all the stuff available. And of course, if you have a message or a concern, question, system setup, or a, a custom request of what you want to buy for your own vehicle, shoot us an email. We'll definitely help you guys out. All right? See ya.